All right, good afternoon. I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply, and in today's video, we're going to make a really fun project, a really easy project, but yet it's also going to be a really nice project. And that is this right here, collapsible dice slash valet tray. Uh, lots of folks play dice games, and it's really nice to have a tray to contain the dice. Uh, I know my mother loves a game called Farkle. I mean, we cannot go to her house without playing Farkle. And uh, she has granite countertops. And if you're not careful, those dice will just keep on a rolling. So, a dice tray is nice. Um, anyway, but it's collapsible because the corners of it here have snaps on them, like that. And then it can just lay flat. Um, so if you are, uh, you know, like the guys that play like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff, they normally have a backpack full of books and stuff to, to take on to wherever they're going to go play. And it sure makes it convenient that this thing will collapse down. Okay. Super duper easy to make. Um, you can make it out of almost any leather. Uh, I prefer things that are a little bit more rigid. Uh, this one right here is made out of just a random oil tan that I had laying around. And then this is cowboy that I lined it with. Um, the random oil tan here is a five to six ounce. The cowboy is a four to five ounce and yeah, four snaps. And then I hand sewed this or I machine sewed this one together. Now the one I'm going to make today is hand sewn, is going to be hand sewn, but I do not have time to hand sew the entire thing today. And I've got to get this video posted. It is 1245 in the afternoon and in 15 hours we leave for the Prescott, Arizona show. So I've got to ad lib a little. <laughs> um, so we're going to get all the pieces ready to assemble and I will show you the beginning steps of assembly and start hand sewing it. And then that's it. And then we'll talk about what all needs to be done, which literally is four rectangles, five rectangles being sewn to this piece of the main piece of leather. Okay. So what I'm talking about is all the red panels. There are five of them, four on the sides and then one right there in the middle. And there it is, okay, the whole thing. Um, and the sewing machine, I made this one. This was my prototype one to uh, develop the pattern. I made this one in about 30 minutes um, using, of course, my sewing machine. But there are a couple of hours of hand sewing to do um, if you're hand stitching this, okay? Um, so without further ado, let's get with it. All right, so the one I am going to do today, though, I wanna make it a little bit nicer. Um, I actually have a really, really cool piece tooled up for the bottom of this thing um, that I totally forgot to bring over here and kind of get in the video with us. Matter of fact, I'll just go get that. I'll be right back. All right, ran across the room and grabbed it out of the drawer that it was sitting in, but there it is. There's the piece that I uh, tooled up for this. Okay, there's a fella in Switzerland named Serge Vulcan, S-E-R-G-E. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Serge uh, is also known as Bigfoot, and he does some really, really cool patterns, a lot of geometric type stuff nobody's ever done before. And um, then I don't remember what he calls this, but anyway, I drew this kind of, you know, thinking about his patterns and how awesome they were. And I just thought for, for a gamer's dice tray, this might be a really neat one. But I'm not going to use it today because I still want to paint it or dye it in some different colors. And it's going to be really cool. And as a matter of fact, I've got the digital drawing of this. I think I'll put it on the free patterns website or free patterns section of our website. And you can, uh, you can download it if you want. But basically, it's a lot of beveling, a lot of pear shading, um, some backgrounding. But I'm going to do uh, each layer of it. There's three different layers plus the background if you look at it. Um, anyway, I want to, I want to really do it up nice. So I've got to take my time on that and it didn't get done before this video needed to be done. So for the next one, anyway, I digress. So today though, I do want to do just some basket stamping and stuff in the bottom of my tray. Um, but the very first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and set the snaps that I need in my main piece of leather. Okay, this is a uh, piece of five to six ounce. This is our um, Legacy Ranch um, lineup. I've been making a lot of bags and backpacks out of this, so I had a scrap of it laying by the clicker when I needed to click something out to do this. Um, the acrylic pattern for this, um, this project is available on our website, and uh, it, it's very easy to cut out. Um, where you get into these areas like this right here, if you'd use a small hole punch there and then just cut your straight lines coming out of that small hole punch 
and then if you if you have a belt punch for an inch and a half belt, then that's what this is. If not, then it's not that difficult to, to cut those round corners, but um, all four sides need all that, plus the, uh, the holes for the, the snaps. But the first thing I'm gonna start with is uh, going ahead and installing the snaps on this. Now, when I do the snaps, I do them first on that piece, and then I'm gonna sew another panel over so there's a snap right here, but you don't see that snap on the inside. I sewed the panel over that, so it's kind of hidden, okay? Um, it's just a way to pretty it up a little bit. You can just go ahead and set it as normal through both layers um, after the whole thing's built, but it, it sure is nice to have that hidden part right there because the back of that snap is usually not as attractive as the front of the snap, okay? So, I'm gonna go ahead and set my four snaps, okay? And I'll do one of them here on the, 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 the camera for you. And uh, I need to adjust the camera and kind of zoom it in on my work, so. Okay, so there are four parts to every snap, all right? I don't know the official terms of them, um, but I have been setting them for years, but I call that the back side, okay? It's, this is the ugly side that we're gonna have um, covered up later. There it is for the camera. Okay, and see the back of it is just not attractive. It's not decorative, it's not nice. So that's why it'll be covered up, okay? I call this the snap right here, and this part connects to that part I just showed you last. Focus. Anyway, if you're looking at a snap, you get the idea which one I'm talking about. This one I call the cup, and it will be inside of the finished um, outside piece there. There we go, focus. All right, and then the final part is the cap. Okay, so if you've got a coat or something with snaps on it, this is the part you see on the outside of the coat. And uh, there's what it looks like. So, how I do this is I go ahead, um, the outer part there that I just showed you last is gonna go ahead and go through one of these tongue areas here that looks like a tongue. All right, set that down on an anvil, or uh, I could use my solid surface here, I guess, if I wanted, but I've got an anvil here. Um, and then I put the piece that I called the cup right over it there. All right. And then here's just a standard Tandy setter. Um, I know a lot of people really struggle with these. And um, anyway, but I'm going to use it, and I'm going to show you some things I'm going to do, or what I'm going to do to make sure it's successful. Now, first off, this snap is a good length for what I'm doing. The post does not stick way up through this thinner leather. On the back side, that will not be the case. Um, the back side, the post is considerably longer on this snap for some reason. Um, so I'm gonna show you how we'll, we'll fix that. But um, anyway, the post is just right on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that setter in there on that post, just like I need to, but I'm gonna push my fingers all the way to the bottom of the setter and I'm gonna hold the snap together so that when I hit it, a lot of people, when they, they <clears throat> struggle with snaps, what happens is they're holding this tool up here. They hit it, this part bounces up, okay? That little cup bounces up, and then what they've actually done is mushroomed out that post without the, the, the button being on it. So I'm gonna push my finger all the way down to the bottom so that I can hold this tool and the snap itself, and I'm gonna give it a few taps. Then I'll check it and make sure that it's mushrooming up, mushrooming up like it ought to. Okay, that's what that looks like. See, that's, um, it's starting to mushroom a little bit, and that's what'll keep it on there. All right, and now that I know it's mushrooming good, I'm gonna go ahead and hold it in the exact same manner again. Give it a few more solid hits. Once I get a good hold on it. There we go. Now it's tight and it's not moving or anything and it looks great, okay? Now, the other part of the snap. This one I'm gonna set from the inside out. The post goes in through what's the, the unfinished side of the leather, which will be inside the tray, okay? And it pushes to the outside. Then I'm gonna take and put the other part of my snap right there, all right? And like I said, this post is a little bit long on this side, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a Phillips head screwdriver and I don't have a whole screwdriver. This is just one of those bits that goes in a drill. And I'm gonna take it and set it right in the center of that, that post. 
and I'm just gonna tap it. I am not using the screwdriver as a setter. I'm just tapping it a few times and I'm splitting that center so that it splits evenly in four different directions. See now how it's square? Because it's splitting in four different directions. Now I'll go back with my same setting tool and I'll hold it in the exact same manner where I'm holding the base tightly. Give it a couple of hits. Everything's good and tight. Nothing's moving, nothing's rotating. That snap is set. Now, when I take this, those two pieces snap together just beautifully and everything is right in the world, okay? Now, I'm gonna pause the camera, but I have to do that whole thing three more times. I got three more corners to go and I'm not gonna make you watch it with me because if you got it, you got it. If you don't got it, hit the rewind button. So we'll be back. All right, so I set four snaps. We are well on our way. Already, this would easily satisfy the needs of a valet tray. Um, valet tray, you know, you take all your keys and crap out of your pocket at night, throw them in something, that way they're there in the morning. Valet tray. However, um, it's not a very fancy one yet, <laughs> and it does not satisfy the need as a, as a dice tray to me because it needs to be very, very flat and squared, I would think, to be a good dice tray, okay? So, let's add to it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to have the five panels added to it, okay? So it'll all end up sewn together like so. And these pieces will help make everything nice and rigid and square and uh, yeah, just like that. So as we sew these in, again, everything's gonna become rigid and square. And, uh, but first I wanna do just, just a little bit of tooling just to make them a little bit fancified. <laughs> we, uh, I, I don't need them crazy by any means, but I figure a little bit of decoration can't hurt, right? So that's what I'll do. So I have these four pieces right here are the sidewalls to the project. Okay, I got two for the short ends, two for the long ends. First thing I need to do if I'm gonna tool on them is put some tape on the back of them so that they don't stretch. All right. Get any. Done a lot of weird work here on my desk lately. I'd hate for some small metal particles or something to get onto my leather. So. Sorry if that was loud in the microphone. I did not intend to make this one of those annoying ASMR videos. Now I'm just gonna start with these two. And um, again, I'm, I'm doing everything four times. Um, and then I'm gonna do the bottom panel as well. But uh, yeah. So put some tape on the back of it, but then I wanna cut off that excess tape because I have found when that tape ro accidentally rolls over onto the finished leather, it can leave residue that will make it to where dye or oil or uh, paint might not penetrate it very well and we like good penetration. There we go. Throw those in the trash. Give it a little spray with water, okay? You gotta get leather wet if you're gonna do any kind of tooling on it. All right, so for the side pieces, I'm just going to scrap me a little line, um, approximately 3 sixteenths to a quarter of an inch wide, all the way around it, using a pair of wing dividers. And that line's gonna mark both the border, plus also leave me room for my stitches on the outside of that border, okay? I can mark me an actual stitch line later, I just need to make me a nice border so I don't accidentally go into that stitch line and uh, make my tooling area too large. Okay, grab my swivel knife here, let's drop it up. Always drop your swivel knife before you use it, it helps it glide through the leather. If you're a beginning leather crafter and you're pulling your swivel knife against your, in your uh, project and it chatters as it goes and it doesn't just smoothly go, then that's probably the issue is it needs to be stropped. Zoom in a little more here. 
There we go. Okay. So I'm going to take my swivel knife and I'm just going to cut those lines that I just drew. And I'm only cutting maybe half the depth of this leather. This leather is probably five to six ounces. Just like that. Now, if you're not super proficient with a swivel knife and you're like, oh my gosh, how did he do those so straight? I used my pinky as I went down the edge of the leather and kind of used it as a guide. I wish this thing would focus on it. Focus on my hand, focus on the leather, focus. Anyway, it's straight, I promise. <laughs> Straight-ish, how's that? All right, now I'm gonna cheat. I'm going to use a um, push beveler on this just for speed purposes, okay? Um, you can easily just go down it with your mole and, a, and an actual beveler that you have to hit and do this, but again, I am trying to get this video out there for you because I have to go to Prescott, Arizona for the leather show there. We will leave at 2 in the morning and drive there, and then we get there about 8 p.m. We drive all day, and then uh, we have to hurriedly unload the trailer and go to bed because the next morning I'm teaching my backpack class. So. That is a sold out class of 15 people that will not be happy if I'm not there. Okay, so I went around it with my, Let's see if I can make this thing focus on this. I don't know. This is a new camera. I'm constantly trying to figure it out. Anyway. Now that it focused on it, and I don't, it's not focusing on my desk, <laughs> figures. Um, so anyway, it is now beveled. Um, and what I have here is a Barry King stamp. It's a diamond. Okay, the, the stamp is a diamond with a star in the middle of it, or a star type shape. And then also the border version of it, which is basically half of that diamond. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to run it around that edge there and uh, we'll use it for some pretty geometric stuff. I like the stamp, but it also kind of gives it a, a bit of a southwest um, look, I guess, that it's not really my intention. I just really like the stamp. <laughs> so I'm gonna go along here and I'm just gonna place this stamp one right after the other as a nice border. And see how it goes. Now, as I get down here to the bottom, I need to see how many of these stamps are going to make it to the end, and I may need to spread them out just a little bit to make sure that they evenly fit. So I'm just spreading them out a tiny bit more down here at the bottom just to make sure that there's room for all of them, okay? And then I'll go up the other side doing the exact same thing. And I just wanna make sure that they're directly across from each other where I did the, the spread out there. Otherwise it won't make much sense. I'm not um, super great at geometric stamping. I've not really practiced it as much as um, other types of tooling and stuff. So it's just not my forte, I guess you could say. All right, I like it, I like it a lot. Focus, please. So anyway, um, 
I don't think I'm going to put anything in the middle of it. I was going to take the other diamond step stamp and run it down the center of it, but um, I kind of like it as it is, and it doesn't have too much of that southwesterny look that I was talking about, so that makes me happy. Let me see if I can do it this way. Nope, that's as much zoom as I've got, unfortunately. There, now you can kind of see it. So I'm gonna do those other three pieces, these other three edge pieces, the exact same manner, and then we'll get to the center part. So we'll be back. Okay, so now I'm down to the main body piece. I did all four of these, and if you notice, I also added another stamp. I added a, um, it's called a seashell filler. I used it on the, uh, it's called the quilted look video. It's been a very popular video for us. But anyway, just in between each of the diamonds, I put that little stamp and it just kind of filled that in pretty nicely. If it would focus. But anyway, um, also um, while I was doing all these, I remembered, you know, things that you forget if you don't do a lot of geometric type stamping, okay? And what I did was, um, I'm gonna do the exact same border on the bottom tray because I really just kind of like it. Um, I was gonna do some scroll work and some basket stamping and all kinds of craziness, but I'm not now. But what I did remember was if I go and I mark my centers of each of my four sides, then what I do is I will start that stamp and work my way towards the edge. And that way, when I have that, that big gap at the, at the ends, that gap is much smaller as I, uh, as I get to each end. Okay. Um, and then I also wanted to bring up this little tool right here. It's a little scratch all. Um, it was made by a guy named Caden Hughes. Um, he friended me recently on Facebook and I was kind of going through his, his pictures of his leather work. He wanted me to kind of critique some of his leather work and stuff. He's a beginner. Um, but I saw this really cool scratch all made out of a 308 shell and um, I guess a drill bit. And I mean, it is holy crap sharp. And uh, anyway, I was like, hey man, why don't you tell me about that right there? He's like, oh, I, I made that, you know? And I was like, well, how about you, you make me one? <laughs> So I bought it from him, um, you know, and I told him, I, I was like, hey, if I like this tool, I'll use it in one of my videos and, and tell people where they can get one too. And he's like, oh, well, I'll just make you one for free. I'm like, no, 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 I want to buy it because if I don't like it, I'm not going to talk about it and I'm not going to put it in a video. And I sure as heck don't want to be obligated to do that and, and support a tool that I don't like. Um, but anyway, really cool tool. Um, it is super duper sharp. I have used it as a scratch all on a lot of things. Um, and when I was doing my scroll work, I was going to use it in this video because then I would be actually tracing around stuff and everything. But um, since I'm not doing that now, I'm just kind of bringing up the tool. <laughs> um, but anyway, this is a really, really cool um, little gadget. I mean, I, I love cool tools. I love different tools. And so I will put his email address in the uh, description of the video. And if you, wanna, if you want a tool like this, you can get with him. Um, it was very reasonably priced. Uh, but I'm not going to throw the price out there because, well, he may find that he needs to adjust it as, as he has to make several of them or whatever. Um, anyway, cool tool. Guy named Caden Hughes. He seems like a pretty cool dude. Hardworking guy. So I like to support folks like us. So anyway, I'm going to go back now and I'm going to um, do the same border now on just this piece. Going all the way around it. And uh, yeah, when I come back that'll be done. But like I said, I, I did my, my same diamonds and then I just took this little, um, there's a narrow and a, and a wide of these seashell filler stamps. And I took the wide one and did it here. But then when I got into the corner where the two diamonds kind of pointed and it, there wasn't as much room, I used the narrow one there. So again, on my, uh, it was called, um, doing the, the, the rope border and the quilted look. I did a video on that. It's been a very popular video. I think it's still my number one most watched video, uh, but you'll see those two tools in action as far as the, uh, the seashell filler stamps. And you can take a look at that and see what kind of cool stuff you can do with that stamp. But anyway, I'm gonna get back to doing the diamond on this. And then when I'm done with that, we'll come back and start actually sewing this project together, okay? All right, so I ran the errand I needed to run. The oil is set up nicely, and um, I'm going the quick and easy method on um, adhering these panels to my, uh, my project. 
and I have put double-sided tape on the back of them, okay? We sell some really, really good double-sided tape, and I uh, just didn't want to stink up the place today with uh, contact cement and stuff. So here I've got quite a few, quite a bit of it on the back of this. Now, since I'm going to hand sew this, I did ensure not to put double-sided tape right along the very edge, um, because sometimes that can really affect your, your uh, needles and stuff. Hand sewing, it gets a little sticky. Machine sewing, I've, I sew through that tape all the time without issue, but hand sewing, it seems to cr 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 create a problem sometimes. So, all right. So I scrubbed that line earlier where this needs to be, right smack in the middle of here. And I'm just gonna gently lay it down and make sure it's still in the middle. And once I know that it is, then I will press it down. Um, but I want to take a ruler here and actually measure it out and make dang sure that we are exactly where we need to be. Do -do -do. Okay, left to right, we're good. Top to bottom, we are not. It needs to move that way just slightly. That's gonna be fun because it's already sticking. <laughs> Told you, it's some good tape. You know what, we may just live with the different, I mean, it was like a 32nd of an inch and I think we'll just live with that <laughs> as opposed to trying to peel it off and reposition it. Um, yeah. We'll just live with that. All right, so now I need to p p p place my uh, end pieces too. And I just center them as well. Making sure they're nice and straight. You can put them up against the top edge if you like, um, or you can just, like I'm putting them, you know, a, 16th of an inch off the edge up there on top and then when this thing rolls closed like that there's not much gappage in between it and the very bottom and that's what I like okay press that on there I'm gonna press every one of these on here and then I'm gonna walk around it with my uh, irons and punch all of my holes and uh, then I'm actually gonna end up taking this thing home and I'll probably end up doing a lot of hand sewing in the truck if if uh, Justin shares the driving duties with me tonight. If not, then I got plenty of time in a hotel room in Prescott, Arizona. My problem is I wake up really, really early and Janie Sue does not, and I try hard to uh, not disturb her sleeping, <laughs> but uh, I don't always have something to do in the hotel room that's, you know, quiet. <laughs> so hand, hand sewing will be just fine. All right, now for the end pieces here. Just like so. And again, they're just centered. I mean, it's not rocket science by any means. When you lay it down there, you can kind of see where it belongs. Like I said, if you're using glue, you'll want to get it in position, scribe a line around it, pull it back up, put your contact cement down, and then put it back down for the good. But there we go. I actually am quite confident in the stickiness here, so I'm gonna go ahead and snap this thing up and show you how awesome this thing's gonna look. Ain't that cool. So again, I will uh, go ahead and scribe some stitch lines and um, run around it with my, my irons. I'm gonna go ahead and poke all my holes. That way all the banging's done and everything. And then like I said, I can silently hand sew this thing at any time. Um, but I'll just, uh, I'll use one of these as an example, one of the sides here. I'm gonna take my wing dividers down to where I want my stitch line to be.
about like so. There we go. Now I need to grab one of my uh, softer pads to punch through and I'll be right back with that. All right, uh, this is my uh, stitching iron I'm gonna use. It's eight stitches per inch. Um, that's kind of my favorite go-to, I guess you could say. I use it on just about everything. But I'm gonna put it to where the edge of it's right up against that line. Knock it through. And then I'll go down the sides doing the exact same thing. Now you may be concerned with what I'm going to do once I get over here where that snap is. Okay, that snap on the back side means I can't lay this thing flat. So when I get to that, I just lay it off the edge of my, my punching surface here. That way I can just get to the part that I need to get to. Okay, and then when I, when I do it on this side, same thing. I just put it right on the edge of my, my punching surface, and that way I can keep it nice and flat and punch right around it, and uh, no big deal at all. You gotta get creative sometimes. So there you go, you get the idea of it. Um, again, I've shown you what I've, uh, what it looks like once it's all sewn together and everything. Um, I will sew around all five of these panels and then again, when it's snapped together, it's gonna look pretty cool. I uh, hope to have this thing completed by the time the Prescott show itself starts next weekend and so I can have it in the booth as a, as a display. But uh, I am really excited about this one. I, uh, I'm, I'm intending to give it to my mother for her Ferkel dice and uh, let's hope she likes it as much as I do. But anyway, um, the acrylic template for this um, is available on our website. I will also put up that tooling pattern I talked about earlier just in the free pattern section. Um, so you can download it and try it out if you like. It's, it's kind of a fun pattern. It's a really neat look and I've got a really, in my mind, it looks amazing already painted and dyed and everything, but I have to uh, convert what's in my mind onto a piece of leather and that sometimes works out and sometimes it doesn't. So anyway, let me zoom out before I get all the way up to my face there. That's terrible. There we go. All right, so there it is. Uh, again, it's a, it's a great little dice tray or valet tray or whatever you want to use it for. And uh, it's a great little project. It's, it's not difficult at all. Um, it doesn't require anything fancy at all, any tools or whatever. I mean, this thing can be made with a box cutter and a ruler and yeah. Um, some hand sewing supplies. So try it out if you're just beginning or make it as fancy as you want if, you're, if you've been doing leather work for a while. But either way, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, again, I'm Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply, and I hope you have a great day.